So as we started looking at our linked list implementation, so far we're super impressed because when we think about what it takes to add something to the front of the list, it's a constant time operation. So that's exciting, right? There's something about this list that performs extremely well, uh, particularly when we compare uh, add to what we had to do with an array, where in order to add things, we had to move everything around, okay? Sorry, the dog's here, she might make some noise. Stop. Um, so now, what's, you might wonder, like, what's the catch, right? There's no free lunch, you know? If, if there's something better about this particular way of implementing lists, there's probably also something that's worse, right? There is a trade-off here. One of the reasons why there's two different ways to do this, as well as many others, is because neither one of them is better in all regards. So now let's think a little bit about how we would need to implement get. So in an array list, get was a constant time operation because all I had to do was index into that underlying array. In a linked list, not so much. This is gonna be more complicated. So, you know, I have this add method that adds things to the beginning. Um, now, how am I gonna do get? So we're gonna walk through this in code, but I wanna show you in a diagram first. So let's imagine that I've created this item, this my list, um, and I've added a few items to it. And now what I wanna do is I want to get the second item in the list. So, so the, sorry, the item at, at, at position two, which is the third item, right? Because we use zero index in here. So what do I have to do, right? Well, one of the cool things about a linked list is that the items in the list really don't know what index they're at. That's why it's, we can add things to the front because every item in the list doesn't know where it is. All it knows is what's the next item. And so when I add something in the front, it turns out that all the other items in the list get pushed backwards, but they don't know that. They don't care, right? So how do I measure an index into a linked list? I measure it from the start. I measure it from the number of hops I have to take from the start in order to get to that position. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, shh, hold on a sec. She wants to play. Um, all right, so let's walk through how I'm gonna do this here. So I know I have a reference to the start of the list and every item in the list has a reference to the next item in the list. So how am I gonna proceed from here? So using the start, I can get to the item with value three. Using that item, I can get to the item from value, value two. And using that, I can get to the item with value one. Now, as I go, I need to count. That's how I know where I am in the list. So when I go from the start, I say zero. Zero, this is the item in index zero. That's value three, right? Then I go one, the item with value two, which is index one. And then I go two, the item with value one, which is at index two. So the third item in the list. And now I've arrived. Right? So let's do that again, right? I know where the start of the list is. In order to find a particular item by index, I need to walk, this is called walking the list. I walk from reference to reference. I use the start to find the first item. And then I use every item's next reference to find the next item in the list. And I count as I go. So I start at the start. I get to item three. That's the in that this is at index zero. Then I get to the item with value two. This is at index one. And then I get to the item with value one, which is an index two, and now I've arrived. So this is the right item. This is what we're gonna to have to implement in code in order to implement get. And you'll also notice that this is not a constant time operation. This now requires several steps, and you can imagine how this works as the list gets longer and longer and longer, and I have to go farther and farther and farther into the list to find a specific item.